and welcome to Banking Frontiers Live. And we are in for a very, very insightful conversation today on a topic which is very deep and fires the key constituents of the banking business, which is wholesale banking. We are talking to an interesting leader. His name is Mr. Kamrul Khan and who is the head of wholesale banking at the Mutual Trust Bank in Bangladesh. Kamrul, welcome to Banking Frontiers Live. Thank you, Mr. Dyer, for inviting me into this. Uh, I'm really uh, happy to uh, meet you guys and uh, also for giving me this uh, chance to talk to you guys. How has the wholesale banking business in Bangladesh been moving all about? How has it been growing in the post-pandemic stage? And what is the kind of outlook of this industry from the wholesale banking perspective? The wholesale banking concept or, uh, you know, segmenting business into different uh, different uh, cluster. Uh, this concept has actually come from the centralized platform of banking that has been uh, newly introduced in a few private commercial banks in Bangladesh. So... We have actually segmented our business into different parts where we look the large we took, took the uh, took the large corporates into wholesale banking and then we uh, the second layer is SME and MSME you can say micro and small and medium enterprises and individual customers are taken care into the retail uh, uh, platform. Mutual Trust Bank uh, is almost it's a 22 years old private bank. It's a, it's known for its reputation in the country uh, due to its sponsors uh, and also the good practice of the banking in, uh, in this uh, bank. My association is uh, with this bank is for uh, over three years. Uh, previously, I used to uh, work in uh, a, few, uh, a multinational bank and then again, then also uh, two, two more private banks. So uh, the wholesale banking in, uh, in this bank uh, actually uh, uh, used to have a, a hybrid model, which was branch banking and then the centralized wholesale bank. So before the pandemic, our board has decided to go full centralization and where we have, we got the scale of wholesale banking and it made the wholesale banking platform larger than previous way because it was in the branch. We have taken out all the branch customers into the center and uh, we are going on this relationship management uh, system. To be honest, uh, uh, wholesale banking, uh, our total portfolio, 80% of the total portfolio is wholesale bank. So you understand how uh, important it is uh, for, uh, for our bank. And uh, in, in the country, uh, the wholesale banking in most of the private banks, the wholesale banking uh, uh, is uh, dominating in our country because uh, the growing demand in the economy uh, has gone the uh, has actually encrypted into the large corporates uh, to get more access to the credit. And that's how banks are more uh, involved into, uh, into the picture. So in our country, uh, you know that pre predominantly the garments and textile is, uh, are the larger uh, corporate uh, uh, corporates in Bangladesh. And they are the most uh, dominating sector in the, in the country. So uh, if you ask me in our portfolio, uh, the 45 to 50% of the portfolio is uh, saturated in or the share of garments and textile is 40, 45 to 50% of our total portfolio of wholesale bank. So uh, before the pandemic, the uh, garments and textile industry was going uh, well. And uh, within the pandemic, you, the global demand for uh, and the retailers were I mean, shut down in different places. The sourcing is done from Bangladesh. So naturally the garments and textile uh, sector, they have seen a little bit of uh, slower uh, uh, demand and uh, as usually that impacted the wholesale banking uh, uh, area of Bangladesh as well. Because in most of the banks, the wholesale banking customers are predominantly the garments and textile. So that's how, uh, you know, uh, it has been a little bit uh, drift for, from the demand side. Now, within the pandemic, the government has actually uh, made a lot of uh, stimulus packages for the uh, wholesale banking customers. 
So we, our challenge was to disperse them into the way the central bank wanted us to do. So because of the, uh, the platform we were working was to, uh, mostly on a you know a physical uh, interaction with the customers and uh, coming into office and we, do, we, do, we didn't have this business continuity plan on a platform like you know IT platform and all. So pandemic has given us a different dimension of business, which is you know doing the wholesale banking through this digital platform and that that really helped us in different uh, different segments. If you ask me the uh, about the wholesale customers in Bangladesh, it is still predominantly the garments and textile, and uh, we have some emerging uh, sectors which are into the picture because uh, the country has a dream of going into a full, I mean, developed country by 2041, and uh, government has actually picked few sectors which are priority for the government and for the country. Uh, like you can say that the, the infrastructure sector, which is you know the the infrastructure development will be a uh, sector which will be a priority for government into into upcoming years or next 20 years at least. That's what I feel. So the IT is another sector where uh, we think that there is a there is a huge potential because of the uh, population and the skill mentor that's coming. And the education is, you know, uh, literacy rate and education is going. Uh, into positive direction for Bangladesh, so which will enable a lot of uh, IT professionals coming into this sector. So, so this is another sector we will look into. Uh, the leather sector is uh, you know, also also a prospective uh, uh, also banking sector which we look into. And uh, the reason it has a, a bright future that I understand is, you know, there is value creation. Uh, opportunity in this particular sector. So, because we have raw hide, a lot of raw hide in, uh, in our country because uh, there are the cattle, you know, in every uh, year, there are many, uh, I mean, the raw material is available in our country. So we, we look for uh, this sector as well, uh, which, which we feel uh, it's going to grow. Uh, the other sector could be the agro processing. So, uh, because we are still, we have a 35% agricultural uh, contribution in, in, into our GDP. So, uh, so the processing of an ag agro thing is going to be uh, the next sector of our. Fantastic. People have really uh, had struggled with the uh, NPS and all in the past. Has that situation been coming up and are things getting better any longer or has it been still there? How is it uh, faring now? I mean, the pandemic has actually uh, disrupted the supply chain a lot because the uh, for the larger corporates, the SMEs are important for, I mean, supporting their supply chain. So since their uh, strength is not that, uh, I mean, their access to credit and you know uh, banking facilities are very tiny, so they couldn't sustain in in, in this shock. And uh, for that reason, government had uh, uh, several packages for uh, stimulus packages for those supply uh, for managing those SMEs so that they can re regain their strength and come back into the picture. So now as the demand side is growing, so naturally the supply side, they're, they're coming back into the picture. So uh, I, I understand. Uh, uh, so the NPL issue is definitely one issue, which Central bank has given a little bit of support through their regulatory changes a little bit. Uh, uh, that's how it, you can say that the situation could have been much worse. Had this been the same uh, same regulation which were uh, there earlier, but government has made a little bit of changes in in few things, you know. So uh, overdue uh, that used to be called as substandard. Probably it's not an overdue uh, substandard right now. Probably they have gone, got some uh, extra buffer from the uh, government regulatory uh, bodies. So, but the overall uh, NPL, uh, I would say that it, it has gone a little little higher than it was earlier than it was earlier in the pandemic. Great. How has your bank been working, uh, you know, to make this bridge this supply and demand gap? 
Let's see, I would I would take two version of it. Number one is you know the regulatory thing thing has helped uh, the uh, the end users of the credit. Uh, the way it is done is I'm sure you know that Bangladesh has a ceiling of interest rate that you cannot lend uh, over nine percent. So our highest rate of interest is nine percent. You cannot go beyond that. Okay. So it's not set uh, by uh, demand and supply. Otherwise, probably this rate would have gone much higher. So there was a buzz uh, in, in last February, March, that the inflation is going high. So if you say that 6% six, six is the highest deposit rate and 9% is the interest rate in the, uh, in the loan, loan interest rate. So how could you manage this? Because the inflation is going higher. So it's a, the, the protection of the depositor is uh, not, not been done. Mm -hmm. So government made our, again a rule that, okay, for the individual depositors, the rate should be higher than the inflation. So, uh, so that's how uh, this, this is one side of looking into that. The, uh, and the other side uh, which you asked is uh, uh, that how we are managing the, uh, uh, this thing. See, we, we got a good set of customers and where uh, we, we feel that it's more of a uh, relationship uh, banking than uh, more of, I mean, than going to a, a demand supply thing, you know. So we maintain a very close relationship with our customers. Even if they're having a access to credit, which is much lower than our, our rate or, you know, getting a 50 bps advantage with, from, a, from other banks, they won't leave us because it's a relationship thing. So that's how we manage our thing. We were very close to our customers. Wonderful. How technology savvy has been your bank? And what are those trending technologies that you come uh, see coming in, uh, which are making a mark in your kind of business? This particular time is not only for, you know, a physical uh, or, you know, in-person banking. It's time for a physical banking and uh, and before the pandemic started, somehow our new CEO who joined uh, in 2019, December, uh, he, uh, he has taken this initiative to go full, I mean, most of the channels, uh, making most of the channels digital. So that step were taken earlier to the pandemic. And when the pandemic hit, and we found, we got to know that, okay, there is a, a base name Zoom where I'm talking to you right now. So that kind of thing was not there in, uh, in the practice of mutual trust bank ever. So the only way of communication was email, that's it. So now it, it has shown how, and in, in Bangladesh, especially in Dhaka city, the traffic is really, really uh, horrible. I'm, I'm sure that in, in Mumbai, I also visited the, the same, bad. <laughs> yeah, equally bad. So. Uh, Zoom has shown, or this uh, I, digital platform has shown that it is possible to, probably I, I don't get the warmth of meeting you, but I, I get to communicate face to face, uh, which we actually started practicing uh, within the pandemic. And uh, I, I first time, I, I, it was awkward for me, you know, talking to my customer, but uh, eventually it has, uh, it, it became a practice now. So digital part, you know, uh, my, uh, I would say uh, for wholesale banking, we used to maintain all MIS, which used to help us. Uh, we, we are using a core banking software, named, which is uh, Indian software, you know, Tata TCS, we are using as a core banking software. We get our uh, MIS, which I require as a, a wholesale banking head or my unit heads or my relationship managers, they, they, they could see their performance. They could see any time, a real time, they can see what's happening in, in, into their business. So those things were uh, more organized when, you know, it, it became for, uh, organized in the, within the pandemic for the top management to see more into in, in depth into the uh, issues. So uh, uh, within the pandemic, we have, we introduce a lot of new products like, you know, uh, now our customer can open accounts uh, on the, I mean, on the IT platform. We can do their KYC on the IT platform. We, uh, we have, uh, we are trying to uh, give them that trade, trade uh, services uh, through the uh, digital channel. Excellent. So what are some of the most popular uh, products in the wholesale banking and corporate banking piece in Bangladesh? 
uh, every single corporate I, I, I go and they have uh, two things there most important for them is you know making payment on the uh, IT, IT platform or you know if, if it is there especially the vendor payments they do every day every single morning they every 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 day morning they do this vendor payments you know 30 100 200 300 payments they, they used to do through you know issuing them checks and all so now we have a uh, real time gross settlement uh, infrastructure in bangladesh which is uh, conducted through the central bank's uh, platform so we have bftn there is another platform which is done so what we are selling to our customer is the e bank the new product we have is a cash management solution so and you know trade is very much uh, regulated in our country because fx is very much regulated in our country so we cannot just allow anybody just sending their money from their account to, uh, abroad. So internally it is possible for external uh, transaction or uh, for external sending money abroad, you need a permission or physical document. So we are doing the 80% of the job through our digital channel and 20% is our, you know, we are putting it into our physical document uh, that customer brings us or bring to our bank and then we execute the transaction. On the digital platform, within the uh, pandemic, actually the customers, wholesale customers' demand is more on, on the cash management solution and the transaction banking solutions, you can say, the trade and cash. Then these are the most important. And according to you, as a wholesale banking head, what have been some of the key challenges in business and technology when you look at the overall business? First thing is mindset. Uh, that's that's That I would say, uh, the mindset is the basic game because uh, when I used to work in a multinational bank, so there, uh, anything, everything is coming on digital platform from, you know, regional office, from the head office. It's okay. I mean, it, it is not, nothing new for a person working in a multinational bank. But in our country, the other private commercial bank, they didn't have this platform earlier. Uh, I would say that you are aware of our business continuity plan, which the multinational banks practice. So that was not there in our uh, current uh, private commercial banks. So those things got introduced within the pandemic, which is a blessing for us. Has technologies like blockchain made inroads into uh, wholesale banking there in Bangladesh? As an industry, we, the blockchain concept has not actually gone into that level where we can do, do transaction within the bank through the blockchain. Within the banks, it's not happened yet. Our bank is quite uh, aware of it. And we have a plan to do in, in the future, but we have not done it yet. In the private banking, uh, there, you know, there are 60 banks in Bangladesh, which are uh, uh, operating commercial banks in Bangladesh. So it's a huge number, but only one or two banks, they have actually gone uh, into blockchain uh, thing. Uh, but when you introduce a blockchain thing in Bangladesh, the cost of doing blockchain or you know, part transaction so customer, if they don't get the advantage in their uh, costing, they will they will not be excited to you know come come to you and say that okay, because I I can hire a person right now, with a you know twenty thousand BDT or thirty thousand BDT, and I can if I can deploy he he will take care of all of my uh, transaction with in the current uh, current uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So uh, for them, it is not actually. Uh, it doesn't make sense to them uh, sending one single uh, LC uh, transmitted through blockchain and, you know, incurring a cost of 10 uh, manual things. So, so the, the scale is not uh, yet ready. Any interesting interactions do you have with fintechs? Are you and your banks trying to work closely with the fintech ecosystem in Bangladesh or anywhere else in the world? In last two years, we have uh, created one with 14 fintech companies probably. I want to be specific uh, on, on a few things. On the lending uh, platform, we have, we have right now four uh, companies who are supporting us. Uh, then we have, uh, for on the onboarding side, we have uh, two companies. And uh, also there are two telcos which are also supporting us. You know, uh, the number one and number three, or number two, probably. They're the top two telcos in Bangladesh who are actually into the platform and they're having bond with us. So for the onboarding and also 
uh, feeding them with the credit necessity of, of their uh, distributor and all. So we are also having that. And we have uh, two QR merchants, uh, so which are also uh, tagged with uh, mutual trust bank. And also there, uh, there is, you know, uh, uh, this uh, one FMC CG, which is Unilever. We are also having a collaboration with them. So these are all uh, 14 around 14 uh, fintech companies we are in. Interesting. A lot more fintech collaborations with wholesale banking happen when you have a straight through processing with the ERP and supply chains of the mm -hmm. large corporates where the SME banking businesses of uh, banks are benefited by dipping into the SMEs of the enterprise and corporate customers. And this yeah. also works with a lot of payment system businesses there. Thank you so much, Mr. Kamrul, and I look forward to more such conversations with you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Nair and your team uh, for giving me this opportunity to I mean, get uh, interacted with you guys.